Hello and welcome to episode three of the Mousy Makes video podcast. You're very welcome and if you've watched episodes one and two, uh, well thank you for coming back, that's great. Um, if you think you would like to carry on watching my podcasts, which I hope you will, uh, then perhaps you could um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and perhaps you could if you like it, you could tap on like, and I would welcome any comments below, as long as they're kind, <laughs> kind or helpful, I think, or just telling me something about yourself. That would be really lovely. So today I thought I'd start off by telling you a little bit about um, the name of my podcast, Mousy Makes. You might have, you might have wondered why I call myself Mousy Makes and the reason is that um, I seem to have had a little bit of an obsession with mice, making mice that is not the real thing. When our cat that sadly is no longer with us, Maisie, used to bring us a live mouse into the house which she did quite frequently then I would run a mile. However I've always liked making mice and my mouse making uh, history goes back to a long time ago when I very first started teaching the piano and the first piano tutor that I ever used with anybody was with a little girl who was five and on one of the very first pages there was a picture of a child's hand with a drawing of a little mouse underneath and the idea was to tell children that they needed to have nice curved fingers when they played the piano and that if they imagined a little mouse underneath their hand um, then they wouldn't want to squash the mouse by having flat fingers and trying to play the piano with flat fingers. So for this little girl I decided to make a, a little mouse. I made it out of felt. Uh, nowadays I still give my new beginners a mouse at their first lesson except now they're usually either knitted or crocheted. This is one that I've got waiting for a new pupil who's starting soon. So those were my first mice. They were for piano lessons. But then gradually I just I just seem to be attracted to making mice. I don't really know why. And a few, quite a few years ago I started uh, doing craft fairs and uh, only two or three a year. I wasn't trying to make money really. And I made and sold an awful lot of mice uh, of all types but my favourite one was from an Allen dart pattern which I've got here, one of them. Um, this this little one here which was in a magazine or oh, I can't remember the magazine that he um, had the pattern in. Uh, he's, he used the, the pattern has, has appeared several times in different forms. I think there was once a Victorian Christmas set of mice and there's been all sorts of things anyway. So this is this is one of the little mice that's an Alan Dart pattern. Um, I've sometimes bought mice that other people have made. And, and probably the favourite mouse that I've got is this one here. Uh, which is a felted mouse. Made by somebody who um, is, goes by the name In the Forest Felting. And uh, she she sells things on Etsy. But uh, I think she isn't operating a shop at the moment. But I really, really love love this little mouse. Um, I've never tried doing a felt needle felted mouse before. Uh, so somehow, when I was thinking of a name for myself, I just had had to have the name Mouse in it. So I called myself Mousy Makes, and on Instagram, I'm Mousy Makes Pod because there seemed to be a mousey makes, although I still can't find it now, anyway. Um, so, so just last week, um, I decided I would try, try to recreate in yarn the drawings that I'd done for my craft website header, Mousy Makes. Um, details of where you can find these things, my Instagram and uh, website, you'll find in show notes below. Uh, but anyway, so I decided to try and reproduce the mouse, and so here he is. There we go. Complete with his knitting and his ball of yarn there. 
And so then I decided, well, since I'd made him and I was very happy with him, that I would try and make it into a pattern, actually write out the pattern. And then other people, if they wish to make a little mouse like this, could make one. Well, I've never done any designing at all before. Um, and I just thought I would have a go and I've discovered how hard it is. And my pattern is only for that tiny little mouse. So I am in awe of people who do lots and lots of knitting and crochet design. Uh, I am certain that it must take absolutely hours, months, weeks and months of work to, uh, to come up with your final design that you can then uh, release to everybody who wants it and I I'm quite I'm always quite happy paying for patterns anyway but now that I've tried to do just a little pattern my own, of my own um I can see that they're worth every penny so it's worth every penny to me I am going to when I've sorted out this pattern I am going to put that on my website and I'm not going to charge for it so if anybody fancies making one of those mice they should be able to in the next couple of weeks or so be able to uh, print out and make a mouse of your own. In this episode, in between my chattering, I'm just going to put some very short video clips of, first of all, rain. We had some lovely heavy rain recently and I just had to go and do some little videoing of it. Not very much, but it's really nice to watch. Um, and also some some clips of the sea when I went to the sea recently, seaside recently. Uh, I went to Whitley Bay on the northeast coast and uh, the sea was absolutely gorgeous. I did actually have to go in and paddle, but there's no pictures of me paddling. There's just some of the lovely rolling waves. <laughs> say that I haven't got any more finished projects to show you. The only finished project was, was my little mouse this time. But I, I think I haven't got anything finished because I've got several things on the go at the moment. And so I'll just show you one or two of those. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to show you is one I haven't shown you yet. And this is some socks because I always have socks on the go. And this sock is the called the pattern is the simple skip sock and it has this beautiful pattern which is created down here um, by doing slip one knit one yarn round needle and then slip uh, put move the slip stitch over the knit one and the yarn round needle it just makes this really pretty pattern. I'm really enjoying this one. I haven't made this before. Uh, so you can see this is the first sock and I've already uh, got around the heel and yes so there we go. So that's so those are actually going to be a gift for somebody but even if they're watching they don't know that it's for them and um, it will still be a kind of surprise for them. And uh, so the pattern I can't remember who did the pattern, but I will put the information down below. So that's one of my, um, oh, one of my uh, <laughs> projects on the go. And here I am finishing already uh, uh, the yarn. I haven't told you what the yarn is. The yarn is uh, from John Arban Textiles and it is Exmoor sock yarn. So I've never used it before for socks. 
I am rather liking it. So we can see just a, a fairly neutral colour, and I did that on purpose because because I wanted the the feature of the sock to be that lovely pattern up the sides. So so there we go. So that's that's one project. The project that is in this bag I can't show you because that will spoil the surprise for somebody. Yeah, I'll just peep a little bit out. There we go. <laughs> but the other person doesn't know who they are, but I don't want to give anything more away. Uh, another project that I've got on the go is um, using my Yarndale uh, sock kit, which so I've got this um, project bag because of course you always need another project bag. You never have too many, and came with this special yarn that West Yorkshire Spinners um, have produced this year called Hope. Where is it there? And and the idea is that it's uh, I mean it's four ply. You can use it for socks or whatever. And I decided. Uh, to use it to make a hat for myself. So here it is in progress. So there, there is the Hope Yarn, but actually I saw, I think I saw on Instagram actually, that somebody had made a hat uh, using this as the ribbed edging. So I decided I like the look of that. So that's what I've done for the ribbed. I'm gonna fold it, I've done that long enough so I can fold it over, and make it a little bit warm around my ears. Um, I'm, very, I'm very sad that um, Yarndale had to be cancelled this year because of the pandemic. Um, but, uh, you know, I was planning to go. I've been most years. And so this is just a little bit of Yarndale. Just, uh, yeah. And, I went, my, and it was really funny because on the day that I ordered this, I found out that my mum had ordered it. And my daughter had ordered it as well. We'd all ordered exactly the same thing without telling each other. And my uh, daughter pointed out that this yarn smells delicious. Mm, it does. It just smells so nice. So if you have some of this and you haven't sniffed it properly yet, mm, it is so lovely. Okay, so that's my hat. I am a little bit worried it looks rather narrow, but I think this is quite stretchy. So I think it will be okay. Um, I discovered when I, when I was doing the uh, ribbing here, uh, I discovered that this this yarn, if you stretch it too much and the and the stitches fall off the end, it actually comes undone quite quickly. You know, some some yarns don't come undone that quickly uh, if you drop stitches off, but this does seem to. So I had a bit a little bit of a problem, uh, but it's all sorted now. It's fine. Nobody will know. Okay, and um, I think the only other project I've got on the go is one that I showed you in episode one and in episode two, and that is my Moreland Stripe Attic 24 blanket that I'm making uh, for uh, somebody for Christmas. Um, I'm not even going to show it to you this time because you've seen it a couple of times before or you can go back and watch episodes one and two. Uh, I am making slow progress, and I think, again, it's just because I've got other things on the go. Um, I have done 50 colour stripes now though. I decided the other day that I would try and do two colour stripes every day to make sure that I do actually get it finished in time for Christmas. Uh, so 50 stripes and there is a total of 115. So I'm nearly halfway. I'll soon be halfway and um, I, I'm sure I'll get it done in time. Right, okay then. <laughs> Absolutely love. As soon as I picked it up, 
I knew that I was going to love it. It just feels nice in my hands, but it looks lovely. It's aesthetically pleasing. And it's called Making Winter, A Creative Guide for Surviving the Winter Months by Emma Mitchell. And it's a book that uh, gives you a whole range of crafts in it. It's got crochet. I don't think there's any knitting in it. It's got recipes. It's got art ideas making things from natural objects, all sorts of things, a really lovely variety of things to do. Got some beautiful photos in it. And if you just look at the names of the chapters, you know it's gonna be a great book if you like this kind of thing. The first chapter is Nature as Nurture. Then a chapter after that is beautifully titled with the word crudel which she explains and which I might tell you about another time. Uh, there's a chapter called High Days and Celebrations, which so that is a little of a nod to Christmas, although it's not specifically a Christmassy book. Uh, there's a chapter called The Greyest Days. And then there's finally a chapter called Looking Ahead to Spring. And I'm going to read you now, actually, um, the, the beginning of the introduction, because the book is also beautifully written really really beautifully written i just love love the way uh, emma mitchell as expresses herself in this book and so here is a little bit of the introduction when the days start to shorten i eye the trees warily at the first yellowing leaf i grumble inwardly once the first branches are bare I have an urge to swaddle myself in cosy textiles. In the bleak, incessant, slate-grey days of midwinter, I peer at the sky with contempt and beadily watch the progress of the bulb shoots in the garden, egging them on until snowdrop time. Despite the presence of that twinkly celebration right in the middle of it, Winter and I have a strange relationship. At best, I feel a little flat, but on very dreary days, it makes me feel rather gloomy. Most years, as summer ends, I wish I were a grizzly bear and could eat all the cake and sandwiches in the picnic baskets, build up a pleasing layer of blubber, dig a large but snug hole and go to sleep until the warmer weather draws me out. However, as a human being, it might be better to devise rather more sociable ways of embracing the colder months. So, isn't that lovely? Re really nice. And it's not just in the introduction that she writes beautifully. It's when she's telling you about um, each of the different activities in here, she writes really nicely. And I think it would be a really nice idea. I am definitely planning to make uh, quite a few of the things in here and I'm thinking that I might do some little videos of me making some of them to show you and then I might read a little bit more from the different chapters um, of the book. So there we go but I can highly recommend this book even though I haven't used it yet. I know it's going to be great. So I think that's all for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been doing and um, I hope that you would like to come back again and and come and join me while I just chatter on about what I've been doing and making. Okay, so I think that's all for now. Bye.